Uh, Turkey also spoke about Crawford Canelo. And one thing he did say, which I thought was interesting, was pretty much saying it's Canelo or bust for Crawford. Um, and, and I feel sorry for Crawford because he's in a situation where there are good fights at 154, but there are no sexy fights at 154 for him, unfortunately. And there are no sexy fights at 160. And then it's just Canelo at 168. There's one. There's one at, one, at, one, one. at 160. Go, go ahead. One. Dude, what's the sexy fight? One Pull back Gennady Golovkin and throw him in the ring with Garn- Gennady Golovkin. Oh, it's too late. It is too late. I love Golovkin, it, but it's it, too late. It is. Oh, uh, modern great. I'm digressing again here, but there's there's talk about Golovkin coming back in behind the scenes. I don't know if you've heard this. Oh, I heard no. this while I was away. I, I know, I know. I, I don't agree with it because he's too old, but... It just got me thinking. That's why I, I, I like the idea of Chris Eubank against Crawford as well, by the way. Mm. Do you like well, that? Well, well, you know what? Chris did, you know, he, he was on Sky, wasn't he? And he, he did kind of give out his hit list. And his hit list was what? Uh, Connor Ben, Billy Joe Saunders, Crawford, Canelo, and Lara. Well, come yeah. on, fight them. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, right? You've got this hit list. You haven't fought for a year. And My understanding, I think I might have said to you last week, is that he may be out on October the 12th. I know I'm digressing here massively. No, but... no, this is good. This is good. What, 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 um, what, Eubank? I think he might. What, I... on the uh, Bivol Baturbiev card? I don't know that. But you do reckon... know. You know something. Stop this. You do know. I can I'm tell. I can tell. Even great. through your blue tinted glasses, I can see your eyes. And I can see, yeah, you do know this. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. That's interesting. Okay. There's talk. There's talk. He's one of the hardest people to negotiate with in the whole of boxing. They talk to him about a Canelo fight. He 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 steps sideways. They talk to him about Hamza Shira's fight. Um, he's just sold his house in Brighton. There's a yeah, lot of things that. going on with Chris, you know. Yeah, Chris just likes poker basically, and <laughs> when when the poker money you know runs a bit dry, he's like, oh, let me just come back to boxing and make a few more million then basically go back and play poker. I like Chris. I like the idea. I'm a big someone... fan of his. Yeah, I'm and he looks fan. like he's in control of himself, in control of his career. He still talks well. He's All boxed off the he's place. He, he really is. I, I had George Groves yesterday next to me. We did a show with Simon Jordan and we was talking about Chris Eubank. And I was like, you know, George had a little kind of, not dig, but you know, they had a fight. So there's, there's always going to be that needle there. And I was like, no, he looks like he's in control of his career, Chris. I think he's doing fantastically well. Um, he, he's, His desire isn't world title fights. His desire is to make money in the sport, and he seems to do that every time he fights. He's a prize I, I, fighter. Yeah, I, I don't mind um, Chris whatsoever. Uh, final one on, on this, uh, Shakur Stevenson, or as you call him, Shakur, because I don't know who's right, me or you. Uh, <laughs> um, but it looks like it could be Joe Cordina. I think that's signed. I think it's signed. All right. Should we Should we um, give our viewpoints on this fight? Like, um, yeah. can, I, can I go first, or do you want to go first? Yeah, go on. Go on. You, know, this, you know what this tells me? This tells me that the 135 pound division is a mess. Uh, like how you have four champions. So you've got Berenchik, you've got uh, Lomachenko, Javante Davis and Shakur. And there are no unification fights is just a disgrace. Mm. This isn't a dig at Joe because look, if this go, if this offer slides across Joe's table, he's obviously going to take it. Why would you not? You're at the age of your career where you want to be in big fights and make big money, regardless of your recent defeat, you're going to take it. But, but Shakur Stevenson really shouldn't be fighting Joe Cordina when there are other champions out there he should be fighting. Like, I blame Javante Davis a lot for this because Javante Davis is almost in a Canelo or a Floyd situation where he can pick who he wants. And if he really wanted to fight Shakur Stevenson, he gets on the phone to Al Heyman and says, look, I'll just make the fight. And that fight's made tomorrow. Um, I, I, I just find it a joke that someone as talented as Shakur Stevenson isn't having a unification fight, but he's fighting someone coming up from Super Fever off a loss. It, for me, it just shows you where the 135 division is. Uh, it does. Um, I think if Joe hadn't lost to Anthony Kakachi, we wouldn't be saying this. Agreed. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. Going up as champion, I'll take it. He squeezed himself down to, to Super Feather, having been a lightweight. Yeah. Didn't work for his body. We both noted when we were out there at that event that he was very, 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 very difficult at the weight. Yeah, um, like almost brittle. Like, just, yeah, he, did, he yeah. Did, didn't look right. He looked like yeah. exactly. He, he looked like a ghost, a man. You could you could bend and snap. Mm-hmm. Um, Kikache has got a great deal of tensile strength and has come into his own as well. Um, 
I think Josh Warrington will have issues with Kakechi at Wembley Stadium. Big, on big issues. The size difference um, is too much. But what I will say, Eddie, in favour of this fight is that in two interviews that I did with Shakur Stevenson uh, over the last three years, we've spoken about Joe Cordina together. And he rates Joe, or he rated Joe, as the best lightweight over here. Um, and I remember saying to Shakur, are you going to come and fight? He said, that's the guy I want to come over and fight. Um, oh, come over and fight. Yeah, that's what that's what he said. Oh, yeah, oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be on the October twelfth Riyadh season October twelfth mm. Riyadh season card, isn't it? It's yeah, Shakur Stevenson tweeted that he started camp now as well. So good. Um, look, I think Joe Cordina's style really suits Shakur, and I think he'll get a stoppage. That Shakur will stop Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, it's a shame when you see a career. And look. Again, I think myself, like you, obviously you and your Welsh roots, big fan of Joe, but it's a shame when a career kind of goes like that. Because if, going up to the Kakache fight, again, unbeaten, IBF champion, and there's all these talk of being in these big fights, but not just in them, but in them to win them. And um, now, I don't know, it's just, uh, I guess, again, look, you've got to take the fight. You've got to Listen, take he looked brilliant team. against Kenegawa. He looked great against Shavkat Rakimov. T- tremendous performances, but I do think. Have you stood next to Joe? He's not. Yeah. He's not a super featherweight. No. He no. he's five nine, five ten. Um, he, I mean, I'll tell you. I'll tell, I'll tell you this now. Even to get into the lightweight division is not going to be easy. Yeah. Like these guys yeah. are really cutting so much to make these weight classes um, mm-hmm. where they look healthy because we we deem healthy when we see abs and delts and triceps, but they're not healthy even on the scales. Yeah. Even the day after when they've hydrated, they're still not healthy. But um, look, good luck to him. And that looks like this October 12th card is starting to build up a bit as well now because, um, very quickly, Fraser Clark versus uh, Fabio Wardley. Looks like it could fall on this as well. Who's told you that? Ah, the birdie, a birdie just, you know, gave me... I, uh, I told you last week, didn't I? M- you might have been the birdie. <laughs> you might have been the birdie. No, I don't know. I know the no, fight's I don't know. Been I don't know. The fight's happening. But I just assume when you look at big cards, I think, where is it going to land? And I don't think it's going to land on a separate boxer card. I can no. see Ben Shalom trying to squeeze it into this. No, the winner of that gets in that mix as well with the top seven, eight, nine, ten at the moment in in for the maybe for that December card. Wow. Um, or you know potentially. Look, you've got Arta Betabiev and Dmitry Bivol, which is an enormous fight. Both undefeated, both great fighters. October the twelfth, Riyadh season opens the season. But what you need alongside that is a card that spills out all over the world and draws attention from the world. So yes, sir. Yes, that, sir. That they need six or seven fights that draw the huge British audience, pique the interest of the Americans. And what we're seeing, I know we can't talk about Turkey Al Shape forever, his excellency, but what we've seen him do is stay in America for a month and start to make the moves there, to do the diplomacy, to do the rows, to... To, to air things in public, to to see, to prod and poke, to test who's what where, to get Javonte on the move, to say why isn't Al Heyman working with um, Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Arum like Ben Shalom, Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren are now in the UK. He's pressing the buttons and he's pressing the buttons because he's getting into those seven princes that I've talked about with you that I call them now. He's getting into the Canelo element. Canelo against Betabiev, maybe. <clears throat> Mm. He'll come out with, <clears throat> excuse me, if better be a beats Bivol, or it's a really close fight. What do you reckon to C- Canelo in my better beer, for example? I think I think I think better beer will run him down like a truck truck running down a Mini Cooper. Or better be up against David ben- Benavides. I, I more want to see better be go up to Cruiserweight and take on Jaya Pataya. Ooh, Jaya Pataya is so big. Yeah, but so is better be He's going to fight, but he's going to fight CBS next, isn't yeah, he? he is. yeah, yeah. Do you know who I'd like to see in this time of fancy fights before they both disappear? I'd like to see Richard Riakpour and Lawrence Coley get it on. I said this in my Riyadh season Africa card. This was like one of the, I think this was one of the guys or matchups that I said, why can't this happen? Riyadh season Africa. I said, right. Bacoli versus AJ. I said, Boatsy versus Yard. I said, Coley versus Riakpour. Right, get your get your pen out now. Put it's your pen up. Hard. It's over there somewhere. I can't. All right, put your finger up. 
We're going to do magic wand right now. Addy and G, G and Addy, and we're going to magic wand <laughs> Lawrence and Coley against Richard React, Paul. We're going, to, we're going to talk it and magic wand it into existence over the next three months. Boom. Okay. Boom. Abracadabra. Uh, let's, let's hope it happens. Bridgerweight title. Does, does Lawrence still have that Bridgerweight title? Yeah, WBC, yeah. He still yeah. has it. All right, cool.